we have here an iMac that is intermittently just kind of stopping and we are wondering what's going on with it. Um, we're kind of at the point where it's time to try and back it up. So what we're going to do is we are going to put it into target disk mode and connect it to another Macintosh. We have here, this is a Firewire 800 and it is being connected to another Mac. So we'll be able to just plug this in and then boot this up in target disk mode by holding down the T button and then turning it on it will come right up into what's called target disk mode where then the Macintosh becomes a hard drive as such and then we can get to it from another machine. So there it is, you get this little symbol it means target disk mode. If we are lucky it will mount right on the desktop. We were lucky once and we attempted to start doing a backup but we started throwing, we went into console and started look and finding that there were disk errors. If you go into console you can then uh, see them in there. In console we see that we have this disk 4 S2 IO error. Now to make sure that that's the right disk you can go into terminal and enter in the command sudo disk util list and it will then show us all of our different um, volumes that are on this machine. And so then if we look down here we see that our the one that we were having problems with was disk 4s2 which is this Macintosh hard drive. So we know there's definitely problems on the hard drive on that iMac. So we have a choice either we can well we could try and back it up now, except we can't because it doesn't even show up on, on the Mac. So we're going to, I guess we're just going to go ahead and have to change it out and uh, then we'll try and get anything off of it um, while it's out of the machine. You can buy specialized tools for, like, here's one, this is like an iPhone disassembly kit. All we really need is some kind of a suction cup. So we just pull the suction cup out, and we should be able to just go dink and pull it right off. So it really, you don't need much of anything to get that off. And then now we're going to remove the screws to take this bezel off. All right, so we got to remove all of these torques around the side. So I'm going to let you do that. I'm not sure if they're all the same, but you can just take them out and put them uh, around the side. They all look like they're pretty much the same here. So far they were all the same size except for now the ones that looks like down here on the bottom are a little bit longer. Okay, we have all of the screws out. Oh, we forgot to remove the RAM disk or the RAM door, which is down here on the bottom. We need a it looks like a regular. Oh, you can't see it. Well, here, can I bring it down where you can see it? Uh, looks like we need a regular, not a regular, but a Phillips screwdriver for that. Okay, this one should just be able to come off like this. This is the RAM door. Where all of our oh, memory is, looks like it's under there. Do I need to? What do I need to do? There we go. Got it. That is now open. All right. Now we're ready to take this off. So we can start pulling that. You can't see what I'm doing. We will start pulling it like this. And the only thing to worry about is the camera and microphone are, connector are right there. So we can undo that so that we don't yank on the wires. It's a little hard to get the tape off, so I'm going to use just my plain old regular knife. 
and cut this tape that they put in the manufacturing plant. They put this tape all around it. So make sure you don't cut any wires, but you're going to get that off of there. Okay, I got the tape off the outside. Now I can disconnect just by yanking it. A trick my grandfather taught me was when taking things apart, when you're taking screws out, remove them and then put them in a line based on the order on which you take them out. And then that way you know the order that they go back in. So those are all the ones that took off the front cover. Now we'll make another further away spot of all the screws for that actually hold the LCD panel itself on. The torques that hold on the LCD are different than everything else. They look like this, a little different. Okay, we got all the screws out. Now let's just use a little screwdriver to get our fingers underneath there. There we go. And the LCD, we gotta look out because there's definitely cables underneath there. Where are the cables? Okay, I should show you. They, there's some back here. I guess I could just pick this up and show you. Uh, see the cables underneath there? So we'll disconnect, reach in and disconnect those. I wonder, yeah, we'll just reach in and disconnect them. One, two, and now we can see in here, here is the hard drive that we are going to I could certainly disconnect everything but let's just there we go got it and all right so that comes out looks like we got more things taped um, oh, this is a sensor for the temperature should take that off there we go because we're going to put that on the new one Okay, oh yeah, that just came right out. That all came right out. There's, we'll just leave that right there. And then unplug. And there we have the old hard drive. So we can now put the new hard drive in there. Actually, this thing is so full of dirt, I think we'll take it outside. I don't know if you can see all the dirt in there. We're going to take it outside and blow it all out. Since we've got it apart, we might as well get all the dirt out of it right now. You can see all the dirt in here. We're waiting for the, uh, for the compressor to come up. So anyways... We gotta wait till we get pressure. We're still not totally up to pressure, but we'll give it a shot. Almost like brand new. All right, we'll hit this part. Looking good. Got a few, few fingerprints on there. Oh well. All right, we need to take the old mounting off of the old hard drive and then put it on the new hard drive. So. These just come undone. One. The other side are these little pins. They need to come off. One. And you don't need to really watch me do this, probably. One and. All right, we're just going to throw this Toshiba in here. It's a two terabyte. The original was a 500 meg, but sometimes it's hard. It's, easy, it's cheaper to find something that's current, so we're, this is just a plain old regular SATA drive we'll plug in there. Nice packaging. I haven't really seen packaging like this. So there it is. And we rip off. 
top and so then that these are then going to go on this side to match up with how they were before okay here's the first side get it nice and tight and then our other side gets this one let's see and it actually goes like this I believe yes because then we can get to the connectors the connectors are then up to the top so there's one and two on that and that looks like we'll get them nice and tight okay I think we're ready to figure out how we're going to put our little temperature sensor on that was on this drive put it on this drive let's see what did this look like yeah it just went right down underneath there so all right we'll take a look okay so now we're gonna stick these little well let's let's plug in everything in first plug the power plug the data they're nice and plugged in Oop. and then now we're going to stick those little pins in the holes okay where are you I don't didn't it's probably better to have more light than I have here sorry guys okay those are in and then and then click and it's in and then here's our temperature sensor I don't know if you can see it but then this just needs to go down here on the we'll just use the old tape and then also the display is going to hold it in place too it looks like we've got all of that I don't know I could use some more tape um, no what do we think I don't know. I think that's probably okay. We'll just make sure these wires are somewhere that they're not going to get pinched. I think that we're looking pretty good because this will go up against the uh, LCD display. So I think we're good on that. So I think we're ready to go ahead and put the to connect these connectors back in again. There it is, and it's they're both clicked. Okay, I think that's all in there. The display goes on, and then we're ready to start reassembling. So, we need to put our screws in. I will do that. Okay, I started on this. I should say, make sure your microphone connector is still sticking out. So, you can get to that. That's the only thing you don't want to bury. All right, I got all the screws in for the LCD panel, and I'm one of those people that likes to plug things in and make sure that they work right now at, before I put too much back together again. I did make, I was very careful that I didn't screw around with any of these connectors and stuff along the way, and you could actually just make sure everything looks like it's still plugged in, just verify everything looks good along here. Uh, and so let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Push the button. And, oh, we got a sound. That's good. And we got a raster. That's good. Now we should see a flashing question mark. That would be a very good thing. So we're, we are heading to Yosemite is where we're actually going to go to which operating system. Um... I think I'm going to probably install Snow Leopard 1068 and then do the upgrade is what I because I think that's the quickest way to install. So there it's not seeing the disk. So the only way to find out if it sees the disk is to boot it up with an install disk. Okay, so I'm sticking in the Snow Leopard 106 install disk and it should find something and we should go from there. Yay! It's booting. This is just standard install. 
And then we're going to go to Disk Utility. Can we do it right now? Disk Utility. And we'll see if we see the disk. This is, this is the true test right here. The answer is... We see a two terabyte Toshiba drive. It's exactly what we wanted. So we are now ready to erase it. And we'll just leave it as untitled. And voila. That, look, we can now put it back together the rest of the way. Changing my mind, I think I'll just go ahead and install the operating system since it's already up. So. And then I'll put the back, put the top on, the bezel. Okay, installing, and this will probably take half an hour, or who knows. Okay, so that installed perfectly well. Now I'm going to install Microsoft Office 2008, because I don't think it will install under uh, Yosemite. Okay, we're totally up. Looking good. Yes, we have to install Rosetta to get this to install. Okay, I'm updating Microsoft Office. Okay, now we're going to head towards just... We need the App Store out of 10.6.8. So we're just going to do the combined update. Okay, we know that it works, so we are ready to put it back together again. So we're going to start with our microphone connector. Okay, I think we got it. And then we're going to push that. No, nope, that wasn't in there. Alright, there we go. Now it's in there nicely. And then we're going to cram it in that little hole down there. I think you start on the bottom. Bottom goes in first, and then the top. Come on. Here, in there. Okay, there. Okay, there we go. Oh, but watch out for your wire. There we go. And then now we need the screws in, and we're looking good. Remember, your long ones go across the bottom. And then the other ones around. Okay, I think that's our last of those. And let's just make sure we've got all of our fingerprints off of the glass on the LCD. And then we'll look at this one, make sure there's no fingerprints or anything on it. Wipe that all off. And then we're ready to put that back on. So this goes, drops right on. There it is, and I think we are done. Oh, there's some fingerprints on there. Now, since we're at 10.6.8, we can go to the App Store and install Yosemite from there. So here's Yosemite, and we hit Get, and it looks like we have to put our Apple ID in. Not a big deal. Okay, it's downloading, and then we'll take it from there. Still downloading. Alright, we're ready for Yosemite install. Agree, agree. Install. And there we go. Restarting. And that's what it looks like installing. Alright, down to a minute. Okay, fresh install of Yosemite. We are done.